So how do you explode your codes? Good question, right? Yeah. Ask the right question, get the right answers <laughs> through recruiting. <laughs> right? I was telling you uh, last night, we do our training on Friday night, so I was telling you know, one of the training, I said, you, I'd love if Primerica was like this. Well, I just sat at my desk and I kind of browsed Facebook, well, looked at ESPN, and then people just walked to the door and said, hey, my name's Joe. This is Primerica? Yes, Primerica. Hey, heard about you guys. I got 99 bucks in my bank account. <laughs> I mean what I say, I say what I mean. I'm hard work and I'm ambitious. I have a ton of credibility. I have about 1,000 contacts in my phone right now that we can go see tomorrow. Can I get started with you? <laughs> Wouldn't that be pretty sweet? Uh, yeah. yeah. Right. Sweet. That's, that's not the way it works. Right? <laughs> we got to go find those people. We got to we got to go recruit people, right? We got to go prospect to people. But the people who talk to the most people are the ones who get paid the most money, right? Yeah. And maybe not up front. Maybe not up front. You might not see the results, but I guarantee you, every person who's building something big, uh, they were they were recruiters, right? They maybe had the biggest incomes at first, and and but but they just kept focused on building and building and building. Raise your hand. You guys listen to the big hitters call, Larry Whitehead, big hitters call. Man, if you don't listen to that call, that's a great call. Uh, Andy Young was on this week. Bill Arinder was on this week. And uh, and um, um, not Christian David, his left line. Uh, what's his left line? Uh, Bruce Call. Bruce Call yeah. was on the line. And uh, they talked about you know the company wants you to run a balanced business, do PLPP, out on home securities investments. Well, you can't run a balanced business unless you got a big team. But it doesn't happen the reverse way. You don't run a balanced business and the big team comes. you got to have a big team and then the balanced business comes. Does that make sense? And, you know, they're talking about Larry Wydell. People get excited about doing 50 recruits a month. Larry Wydell is doing 200, 300, 400 recruits a month when he could first got started. But that's how he exploded this thing. Larry Wydell hasn't run a base shop in I don't know how many years. But it's all through recruiting. So you got to focus on one thing, recruiting. You will recruit 25% of your guests for the month. So, again... On that whatever it takes sheet, I have a, a space at the bottom where it says guests for the week. And that's guests. So that's actually people who come down to my office. Right? And I write down their names, and I write down the day they showed up, and if they're a direct or if I got it down for a teammate. Okay? So I track that so it's very predictable. You know, like I said, we're kind of in a little rebuilding stage, right? Last month, I think we had 30-some 30, 30 guests, and we did seven recruits, which is sick. I mean, I'm, it makes me nauseous thinking about it. But... That's about 25% of, of the people who showed up. So if I average 10 guests a week, that's 40 a month. 40 times 25%, 10 recruits. That's a double, that's a double digit recruit. Makes sense? So again, inspect what you expect. you got to recruit, but you got to focus on, okay, how many appointments are in my book and, and how many people are actually showing up? Because it's very predictable. If you have 40 guests, you're going to recruit about 20 to 25% of them, give or take, you know, what kind of market you're in. Obviously, a warmer market your ratio is going to be a little bit better. Colder market, your ratio is going to be a little bit uh, lower. For example, again, if you had 20 guests for the month, you're going to recruit, expect to recruit about five people for the month. If, uh, you, know, if you want double digits, that, that, that's, 10, that's uh, 10 guests a week, 40 uh, for the month. So how to increase your guests. Good question, right? Mm -hmm. 10 commits a week. You've heard this, right? 10 commits a week. What's a commit? That is someone who says yes. They will agree to meet with you. You leave your options open. You guys leave your options open. I can't promise you much, but I can get together and put some info in your hands. They agree to meet with you. Now, well, I'll let you know if I can make it. Okay, great. I'll see you there on Wednesday. I'll see you there on Tuesday. When do you guys do your op now, interviews, whatever. So 10 <coughs> commits a week. I think that's a minimum. If you have 10 commitments a week, three of them will show up, right? Which means six or seven of them won't show up. And you should understand that and you should accept it. Uh, for the longest time, it, it, was, it was hard for me to accept that. Right? I, here's why. I believe because we're people of integrity. Our, our word means something to us. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. If I say something, I mean it. So when I told my brother I'd be there, I didn't really want to go, I, I went. Right? So it's hard for me to understand someone tells me, okay, yeah. Kim told me she'd be here, and she doesn't show up. That, that would eat me. I would stay awake at night like, why didn't she show up? Is there something wrong with me? Did she Google our company? What is wrong? Not, 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 not Kim, but you know, people like that, they just don't have any integrity. It's people. People are funny creatures, right? And we got to be compassionate, just understand that's just people, right? So it's not you. You got to know six or seven of them are not showing up, right? But here's the thing the more you increase your numbers, <coughs> the less impact that has on you. Trust me, I'm so busy sometimes for the week with appointments I have booked, recruiting interviews I have booked. 
I don't even have time to call my no-shows. Before, I, Joe, miss you last night. Is everything okay? I, I call my no-shows. Sometimes now I can't, I can't even have time to do it. So you lessen your impact by ha increasing your commitment count. But if three guests show up, you're going to recruit about one of them, one or two of them, right? So just know those numbers, accept them, and work them. So how do you grow your recruiting numbers? Good question, right? Mm -hmm. Double-digit recruit. It's a long way to do it. Bill Renner on the call this week, he said, if you don't, if you don't double-digit recruit, you don't, you're clueless about Primerica. To expect to build anything in this business without recruiting less than 10, it's really, you're kidding yourself, right? You're spinning your tires in the mud. Trust me, I've done that. I've been there, right? It, it's, it's just not fun. But if you focus, if you just sell and make a decision, okay, I'm going to be a double-digit recruiter. I don't care if you've never recruited any. Raise your hand if you recruited one person in your entire career. Okay. I don't care if you recruited nobody. You could, you could double-digit recruit. <coughs> And at one point, I didn't recruit anybody, but if you focus on double-digit recruiting, the law of large numbers will work out for you. Ten recruits in a month, three quit right away. Yeah. Right? They go in the witness protection program. <laughs> right? This is someone you used to always see at the gym, right? You go to the gym, like, where, where's Joe been, man? It's like aliens came down and got him, right? <laughs> that just happens before... Right, right, you hit submit, right? You submit the application, they're gone. <laughs> yeah. So expect it. Three will quit. Three will show up when it's convenient. Three will become licensed, happy part timers, and you'll find one producer. You guys, this is nothing new to you guys, right? You've all seen this. You're in the harms organization, you've all seen this, but I think it's always refreshing to hear from somebody else. Right? And what happened to me, I grew up, you know, obviously, listen to Mark and Kathy Mark, he needed double digit recruit, double digit recruit, double digit recruit. <laughs> right? Sometimes you get tone deaf to your leaders. What happened for me was uh, when uh, Anna first started the business, uh, Brett and Andrew Burks came out and did a fat. You guys remember the Brett and Andrew Burks? Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, they still are one of the biggest recruiters in the company. They're doing 200 recruits a month. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're, right now we're looking for office space, and this is our first time doing it, and it is a nightmare <laughs> dealing with some of these landlords and whatnot. Um, but uh, it, it's funny how, you know, they, they have their own agenda. But Brett Burks tells the story. He was recruiting so many people. He, he was getting kicked out by the landlords. People were complaining that so many people come into the office. He got he had to move offices two or three different times in one year. Wow. So eventually, what Brett did was he go out and he just bought his own building. <laughs> so he's the own land. Isn't that pretty cool? He's a landlord of his company. But he was he was working these numbers. He he was working these numbers. Uh, but when you find this stud, that's really refreshing because you're going to find someone who means what they say. And they say what they mean. They want to show up. They you know they're serious and motivated. But you can't find them if you don't hire ten. This is not just Primerica, it's everything, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys have a job, anyone in here have a job? Right, go to your job on Monday, wouldn't you agree 20% of the people do 80% of the work? That's right. right? That's Primerica too, that's everything in life. Everything. You know, I'm a big basketball fan, and I grew up uh, you know, watching the Chicago Bulls. So I actually you know, saw Michael Jordan, yeah. and you see a lot of these young kids now that are buying Jordans, but they didn't even see the guy play. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Mike, I love Michael Jordan, love the Chicago Bulls, and, you look at the Chicago Bulls when they had their dynasty, right? They had uh, they had uh, bench warmers, guys who had their starter, uh, you know, jackets on, and they they, they never played. They just sat in the bench. Yeah, go Michael, go Scotty, <laughs> right? They just sat in the bench. Then you had the role players, people like Luke Longley, mm -hmm. right? Bill yeah. Winnington, right? Uh, B.J. Armstrong, John Paxton, right? All those guys. Steve Kerr, right, coach of the, the, the Golden State Warriors now. Those are role players, right? Then you had the, the, the stud, you had the Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippins, right? That's exactly how everything works, isn't it? Right? You're going to have, when you hire people, the people who want to sit in the bench. And then one thing I need to grow and that I'm getting better on is just accepting that. You know, some people, timing's everything. You know, thank goodness, Mark and Kathy, like Anna said, believed in me and always spoke belief into me because I stuck around. I showed up to everything. Right? I mean, I put the biggest numbers on the board. I remember going to money money managers meetings at Mark and Kathy's office, and I'd sit there, and, and Mark would take all the, all the vice president's numbers, right? And, and, and he'd take recruiting numbers, premium numbers, securities numbers, income numbers. I remember Josh on it, always get up there, 5,000 premium, 6,000 premium, 100,000 investment, eight grand of income. Nine. I was like, man, I just want to close a daggum sale. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I got, I got two grand in chargebacks. <laughs> I got to pay this stuff back, right? So I would sit there, right? 
I don't know how I got off on this uh, <laughs> Keep going, okay. this, uh, this this topic, but I, wa I wanted to do it. Oh, timing. Timing's everything, right? Yeah. Then you keep showing up. Sometimes the bench warmers will then move into the role players. Okay. And sometimes the role players, when a starter gets hurt, they'll step into that superstar role, right? And that's something i got to work on. Again, I told you I'm not that good of an R, where if someone's not serious, I'm like, eh. Right? But, you know, keep encouraging people to show up. Keep encouraging people that they can do it because they can do it. Uh, there's a reason you're here. There's a reason you're here on a Saturday morning when it's a lot easier to be doing something else. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Sure. Right? So there's a reason you're here. Something can click for you. Something can click for you. I don't know what it's going to be, but something can click for you. And you just go like a man, man, man. You just go on a recruiting blitz, and you could change your career if you just made the decision. But don't ever stop showing up. I'd much rather have a bench warmer than, than uh, someone who quits. Wouldn't you agree? So just know that timing's everything, but at the same time, there's a 20% rule, you know, spend 80% of your time with the 20 percenters, spend 20% of your time with the 80 percenters. Make sense? You gotta recognize that, just don't, don't shun people, but make sure you're spending your time with people uh, who deserve it. Now, consistency is a secret. You guys want the secret of Primerica? Consistency. Consistency. Whitney Cooper talked about this all the time. Right, what's CCC, Coach Bull, committed, consistent, right? Uh, they're consistent. They are very consistent. And that's the thing that, you know, attracted me to Robin Williams. They're just very consistent. And, uh, you know, I'm not the most talented person. Um, you know, I'm so proud of myself. I closed a $104,000 variable annuity last month. All right. All right. All right. I, don't, I don't know security is as good as some people. I can sell it, right? All I do is draw the little elevator example. That's all I do, draw the elevator example, right? But I'm not the best securities guy. Uh, you know, I'm good at life, and you know, but I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll outwork people. I know that's the one equalizing primary. If you just outwork people, and you're just consistent, right? You can get the results. That's the thing I love about primary. You know, I love basketball, but you know, the Denver Nuggets are <coughs> calling me for a try. <coughs> you know, I'm, I'm six foot, I'm not that tall, right? I, I, I used to be able to dunk, I can't dunk now, but you don't have to be LeBron James to win in primary. You have to be 6'8", 240, right at the bench, 225, 25 times like Tom, right? <laughs> sure. Go! It helps. It does, it does help. help. <laughs> but if you're consistent, if you're consistent, those are superstars. Look at Mario Arizona. Yeah. Right? The guy's like this tall. Yeah. <laughs> this guy. Those are the biggest teams, right? Because the guy's a worker. Yeah. He's consistent, right? So consistency really is... The, uh, the secret. Double digit recruits six months in a row. Obviously that's 60 recruits. 18 of them are gone. 18 of them will show up when it's convenient. Uh oh. <laughs> I didn't press that. So 60 recruits, 18 of them quit. 18 of them show up when it's convenient. You're gonna get about 15 licenses. I'm assuming, I'm not a math genius, but Yep, 18 new <laughs> license codes, right? And then you got six producers, give or take a few, right? But is it worth going through all the no's and the activity and the frustration to find six producers? Because yeah. yes. isn't that what it's about? Yeah. Find yes. the winners, right? So again, you can't get caught up in all this. You got to get focused on, okay, I'm looking for some winners. You know, one of my affirmations is I attract ambitious, credible leaders. That's what I want. I want ambitious, credible leaders. I attract ambitious, credible leaders for winners. <coughs> right? Like Ray was saying, are you possibly just like, make these calls real quick and go eat my ham sandwich? Right? Or are you saying, okay, whose life am I changing today? I'm going to go find me a Josh John. I'm going to talk to Kim all today, right? I'm going to find someone like that today. So that's, you got to start the end game in mind. Just know that when you keep scooping all that pile of dump, there's a donkey at the bottom of the pile of crap somewhere, right? <laughs> when you're digging for gold, you got to go through a lot of dirt, but there's an end in mind to six producers. How do you double digit recruit? All right, there's no secret. Here's a quote I simply showed my plan to 1,200 people. 900 said no, I signed up 300 people. 85 took me seriously, and I made $11 million. Maybe a multimillionaire, Bill Gates. They're pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. And we're concerned about Joe at Taco Bell who told us no. <laughs> <laughs> who cares? <laughs> Seriously. My recruiting presentation is about 12 minutes. I interview someone. They're out. 
There's nothing I could say or do. There's no Hopkins technique. I mean, somebody's either interested in your business or they're not. So if you just increase the people you talk to, the numbers will work out for themselves. 900 people said no. Sign up 300 people. 85 took me seriously. 11 made me a million, a multimillionaire. Bill Gates. Isn't that pretty powerful? Yeah. <laughs> right? Recruiting is just a numbers game. You got to fall in love with the numbers, and you just got to work the numbers. So uh, one of the things I was gonna ha uh, give you guys some little how tos. I'm a firm believer. Uh, you know, I was never a big motivation guy. I came to Primerica. I was like, kind of this motivation. Just show me what. What do you say to them? How do you do that, right? <laughs> Josh, how'd you write five thousand a plane? What do you do, man? Right. So I'm the kind of guy. Yes, I think you gotta have fifty percent motivation, some education as well. So I'm gonna give you guys. Uh, if you could pull up the keys to a strong closer, if you wouldn't mind. Thank you so much. You're doing great. Um, here's a couple of how tos I think that could help you guys uh, when it comes to recruiting. And uh, these are things that um, I think are helpful to my team that I've kind of implemented with us. But uh, keys to be a, uh, being a strong closer on the phone, different phraseology you can use that can help you when you're prospecting. I know that, you know, when I sat through trainings, you know, I'd hear someone prospect and I said, oh, I like the way he says that. Right? So when I get up and speak, don't feel like, okay, whatever Josh is telling me, whatever Tom is telling me, I'm going to ban, I'm going to do what Ryan's telling me. No, 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 don't do that. Right? There's a reason they're your leader. You should admire them, you should respect them, uh, do what they tell you to do, but just take the best, leave the rest, take the things you like, don't, take, don't, don't use things you don't like. But these are some basic things that I use uh, when I prospect people. So um, is there any way we could get it smaller so they could see the whole thing? or? Don't ask me to do it. I, I am half Japanese, but I, I suck at technology. <laughs> That's why I have an apple. It's simple. Don't really And again, I could email you guys this stuff as well, but I want to kind of walk you guys through just a few things I think can help you in your prospecting. Um, help you get, get more confidence. You know, they say seven percent of, 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 of talking of communication is words. Uh, Thirty some percent is tonality and, and, and physiology, right? Uh, so most of it comes to your body language and your confidence. But I do think if you know the seven percent words, it can make you that much more confident. Make sense? So there's keys to be a strong close on the phone. Tonality. Tonality is key. Uh, don't raise your tonality when you ask a closing question. Hmm. So, for example. Uh, if you're if you're prospecting someone and you ask a closing question of, do you leave your op? I ask that question. Hey, do you leave your options open if the money are right? Would you be interested in making extra income part time or career change if the money are right? Hey, are you married to your job or would you be interested in a career change? If you ask that question, notice my tonality stays the same, if not drops off to a deeper tone. Mm. You never want your tonality to raise. That shows lack of confidence. I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm prospecting Tom. Hey, Tom, you have great people skills. I'm looking for some people. Hey, would you be interested in making some extra money part-time? <laughs> <laughs> you see the difference? That shows lack of confidence. So when you ask a closing question, same thing for life insurance, right? Who handles the checkbook in the family? Hey, who handles the checkbook in the family? Right? You want to make sure tonality stays the same, if not drops off, so that they know you're confident. People follow confident people. If you're confident, it overcomes most objections. Okay, so don't raise your tonality when asking closing questions. Pace, talk slowly with confidence. That's something I had to work on. I talk fast, I still do. Uh, but you gotta slow it down. Record yourself. Have a tape recorder, have your iPhone out or whatever, and record yourself when you prospect. All right, well, here's one of the things I did when, I leave, when you leave a voicemail. Did you know when you leave someone a voicemail, you can hit pound and you can listen to your voicemail? You didn't know that? <laughs> Yeah, so I call people, I leave recruiting messages, and I hit pound, and I, I hit replay. You can listen to yourself, you can delete it and re-record again. Because I, I, I stutter sometimes, so I was terrible on the phone at first, so I hit pound and I listen to it, I'm like, holy cow, you can't understand anything, I'm, I'm talking way too fast. <laughs> so use that, when you leave a message, hit pound, hit two to replay, replay it, say, okay, if I were on the other end, how would I interpret that? Because it's not what you say, it's how they interpret it. Perception is reality, right? You got to get good at becoming a good communicator. You know, when I wrote, uh, when I was, I took a, you know, a writing class. You know, one of the first things they taught us is when you write, I don't care how much you know about the subject. I don't care who you're writing to, who your audience is. You need to write it in a in a in a, in a, in a fashion that the audience, if they knew nothing about your subject, could understand it. 
Does that, make, does that make sense? I think the same thing goes when you prospect people. You may know what you're trying to get out and what you're talking about, but do they know? Right? And one of the ways is slowing down. That's one thing I, I, I struggle with, is just slowing down. All right? You should know your office address. Not my office address. You can send people there. I'll interview them but uh, know your office address. You know, I remember one, one time I was prospecting people, and the guy agreed to meet with me, and I was so freaking excited. And I was like, oh, I got an appointment. And uh, I, I just I said, great, I'll see you Wednesday. <laughs> Didn't give me the address. He called me back, hey, do you have the address? Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, you should know your address. Memorize the address. Body language. Pretend they can see you through the phone because that comes through the phone. Would you agree? Absolutely. Right? So you can listen to Jim Penn. We get paid the price. But you guys have that CD? <clears throat> right? Best CD in Prime America. The first year we always get to our new people. He listened to this over and over. He get tired of his voice listening to it over and over again. But Jim Penn said when he prospected, you know, even if he was at home, he wasn't in his pajamas. He had his, you know, his, his shirt on, his you know, collared shirt on, business tie. He didn't prop his feet up on the desk. Right? He would sit there, lean forward, and prospect like he was meeting with someone. Right? So your body language comes through the phone. Mark always says, you know, got Dave Harms always said, have a mirror in front of you. Right? Have a mirror in front of you. Some of you guys would be scared, right? <laughs> <laughs> Smile more, that, that comes out. Um, here's, a, here, here's some basic objections people usually ask when you prospect people. Uh, what would I be doing? Right? You ever get that? What would I be doing? So I just tell you, basically I'm looking for someone who has great people skills to work with and service our clients. And I'm also looking for someone who has some leadership skills who could be successful training and developing others and running a management team. Does that make a little more sense? Yeah. You feel pretty confident with people? Oh yeah. You ever trained someone before? Yeah, great, you're gonna find our business very intriguing. Again, I can't promise you much, but I can get together with you down in my office either Tuesday or Wednesday to get some details in your hands, which do you prefer? Right, so you get that question a lot when I prospect what I'd be doing. Here's my mindset. If someone talks about financial service, asset management, whatever you say we teach you about money works, I would be intimidated. I was intimidated when my brother talked to me about it. So initially, you've got to overcome that intimidation factor by letting people know you're not looking for a financial expert, right? Hey, listen, Tom, I'm not looking for a degree or background, man. I'd rather train someone from scratch. I'm just looking for someone who has some great people skills, um, who could be successful, and more of a leadership or a manager role. So, Tom, you ever trained someone before? You feel confident with people? Yeah, absolutely. Great, you're going to love our business then, right? So I always want to go back to, are you good with people? You ever trained someone? Because in the end, do you want to recruit a salesperson or a freaking builder? Now you want both, obviously, right? But you want to look for those building mentalities. And again, people can be intimidated by financial services. So this is a way to kind of ease their mind. Like, no, I'm not looking <coughs> for that. Most people have some form of management background. They train someone, and then they feel good with people, okay? Uh, someone tells you no. So you want to you want to win the game psychologically when you get a no? Yeah. Right? Here's how I win the game psychologically. Because I feel bad. If someone says rejection, rejection doesn't bother them, they're lying. Everybody doesn't like rejection. I still like rejection is a little easier to tolerate for me now that I've called thousands of people, but rejection bothers people. Here's one way to always win the conversation. So if someone tells you no, I'm not interested, I'm not open, I love working at McDonald's. Whatever, right? Here's how to win the conversation psychologically. Someone tells me you no, know, I said, Really, Tom? Wow, man, I gotta commend you, Tom. You know, I don't come across too many people that are happy with what they're doing these days, so you should feel fortunate. Real quick, Tom, maybe you can help me out. I'm looking to fill a few part-time and full-time roles this month, and I do find good people and know other good people. Tell me, who do you know that's not as happy as you are that is looking for a career change or extra income part-time? Wow. I'm going to ask for a referral. You know how many times I get a referral over the phone? Oh, matter of fact, call this guy, right? And if, if, they, if they say no to that, I'm still going to win the conversation. <laughs> okay, no worries, Tom. Hey, could you do me a favor and just jot down my name and number? And if you come across someone, you can give them, uh, uh, you can have them give me a call. But just do me a favor, Tom, and only send me someone you would hire yourself, okay? Hey, thanks. Hope your career at Taco Bell continues to go well for you. <laughs> and I leave him with my number. I got this from Shane Rubin. He calls the Coke example. All right, imagine you want a Coca Cola. All right, you're thirsty, you want a good, tasty Coca Cola with the carbonation, right? Some high fructose corn syrup, right? <laughs> if you want a Coca Cola, you could go and find one. Drinking a Coke. You can go and find one in a matter of seconds. I bet there's a vending machine right around the corner, right? Shane Rubin says you want your name to be as accessible like a Coke machine would be. So when he would prospect people and they'd tell him no, his first step was not to get intimidated. Because initially, when we hear the word no, psychologically, they expect us to, to shut down, right? Mm -hmm. I told the guy no, now he's going to get off the phone. 
So what I do is I just use reverse psychology. No, really? That's awesome, Tom. <laughs> Man, I gotta commend you. I don't know too many people that love their love their job. Man, you should feel fortunate. Well, let me ask you a question, Tom. I find good people know good people. Tell me, who do you know that's not as happy as you are that's looking for a change of extra income? I don't know anybody. Okay, no worries. Tom, could you do me a favor? Sure, well, whatever. Hey, could you take down my name and number? Ryan Moody, M O and I say it fast, M O O D Y seven two eight four nine five eight five. Tom, I just talk kind of fast. Can you repeat that back to me? Because I know you didn't write it down. Mm -hmm. Oh, what is it? Ryan Moody, M O O D Y. My number is seven two zero eight four zero nine five. Give my number, Tom. Hold on that number. I Man, if you hate your job in six months, call me. Or if you come across someone, feel free to send them my way. Just don't send me anybody you would hire yourself. Can you do that for me? Absolutely. I'll give you an example. So about a month and a half ago, uh, so we hired this couple named uh, uh, Jocelyn and Marvin indirectly through another direct, and uh, we, we met up with them at an, I, at an IHOP to uh, kind of build a list and get them up to fast start. Met them pretty late at night, like 9 p.m. at night. And uh, anyways, our server, his name was Otto. That's his name. Real outgoing guy, good people skills. Uh, I don't really go out and about prospect, but if I am out and about, I'll prospect. Uh, so I had good people skills. So at the register, I said, "Now, how long have you worked here for?" Oh, I've worked here for about two years. Wow, man, you're, you're a great sir. You have good people skills. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Tell me, man, is this something you're locked into, or do you leave your options open? Why leave my options open? Why do you ask? Well, you know, I'm looking to open my own office and looking to hire and train some good people, and you know, I just want to see if you might be open to exploring your options. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great, man. I know you're on someone else's time, but uh, let's exchange numbers. I'll give you a call. Fair enough. Yeah. Boom. We'll get his number. Call a bottle. He knows shows me, right? So I call him, call him, you know, 30 minutes later. Oh, man, I forgot. You know, I've been thinking. I want to actually get in this field. So maybe financial service isn't the best, right? So I could easily hung up the phone. Okay, Otto, whatever. Well, Otto, maybe you could help me out. I find good people, know good people. Tell me, who do you know that would be looking for a change of extra income part-time? Well, my friend Gustavo, I work with. Gustavo's good with people. He might be interested. <coughs> Great. Here's how I get a referral. Because sometimes people are like, oh, I don't want to give someone's name out, right? Tell me about Gustavo. Oh, Gustavo's great with people. He's hardworking. Okay, great. Well, listen, Otto, I can't promise Gustavo anything, but if I called him and I use your name and I told Gustavo you thought he was hardworking and very credible and great with people, he wouldn't be offended, would he? No. Great. What's his number? <laughs> That's how I get someone's number over the phone. So I want to talk to him first. That's how you get the number uh, before they talk to him, right? Great, what's his number? Boom, 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 write down Gustavo's number. Hang up with Otto, boom, Gustavo. Hey Gustavo, Ryan Moody, we haven't had a chance to meet yet, but your friend Otto asked me to give you a call. He knows I'm looking to hire and train some good people. He says you're hardworking, he says you're great with people. Is that true? Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> well hey man, I just want to see if you'd be interested in making extra money part-time and looking at a career change. Absolutely, right, can't promise you much, I'll have to get together with you. Set a time to meet with Gustavo, he knows shows me. <laughs> <laughs> Gustavo, Ryan Moody here. <laughs> Didn't see make him make sure everything was okay. <coughs> Hopefully nothing serious came up. Right? Oh yeah. Right, I want to be honest with you. Okay, wait, what's up, Gustavo? Um, you know, right now I'm actually going through immigration. I don't have my social yet, and I, I don't know if that'd be an issue. I said, man, thanks so much for being open and honest with me. I appreciate you, you know, being you know person of integrity. You know, that, that that could present a challenge you have to get lies with us, Gustavo. But maybe you could help me out. I find good people know Gustavo, just like I met you. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you know? Uh, I don't really know anybody. So I could have hung up right there, right? Oh, Gustavo. Gustavo, do me a favor. Take down my number. Save it, man. When you get your social, you call me. Or if you come across someone that's looking, feel free to send them my way. Only if you would hire them. Can you do that for me, Gustavo? Yeah, I could do that for you. Okay, so that was about mid, uh, late January. Uh, Sunday, when we're flying back from Puerto Rico, I get a voicemail. Hey, Ryan, my name is Justin Lowe. My neighbor Gustavo gave me your number and he says you're looking to hire some people. I uh, appreciate a call back. Here's my number, right? Mm -hmm. Call Justin Lowe. Hey, Justin Lowe. Ryan Moody here. We haven't met yet, but Gustavo told me to give you a call. Yeah. What do you do now? I'm in a call center looking for a change. Great. Can't promise you much. Love to put some info in your hands so there's a mutual interest. Invite Justin down two weeks ago, Wednesday night. Meet him on Thursday. Do his orientation. Hire him, right? Build his list. Uh, set an appointment with his brother who has a kid. So you can go see his older brother, actually his younger brother, who has a kid, did the presentation, no life insurance, put 400 grand, of, 400 grand of coverage on him, right? As we go through this, you could do what uh, what uh, Justin's doing, can't you, Brian? Yeah, you could do that. Well, I mean, you got a big shortfall where you're working now, and they're going to pay you 1000 bucks a month. I'll never. So 
what you're telling me is if you keep working there, you're never going to accomplish your goals and dreams. Is that what I hear you saying? Oh, yeah. Well, you've heard the phrase, if you keep doing what you're doing, you keep getting what you're getting, right? Oh, yeah. Circumstances don't change unless who changes? Unless I change. So you want to change, Brandon? You want to change? Yeah. Well, him, we've got these referrals right here. I mean, I can go see him by myself with, uh, with a just. We can make all this money. Or you can come with us, man. Which do you prefer? I'll go with you. Great, man. Send this text message to all these people. I'll set the appointments for you right now. Right? Boom. Got a KT set up with Brandon with one of his coworkers tonight when he gets off work. Right? So that's, that's the power of winning the conversation. Ask for the referral. If you get a no there, leave them with your name and number. You never know who they're going to come across. Here's the thing. They can't mess it up either. Otto never came down. So he didn't even see what we did. Neither did Gustavo. So they can't mess it up. So if I'm Gustavo and I bump into Tom, Tom, somebody who hey, hates his job, he, hey, I got this guy's number, Ryan Moody, give him a call. What does he do? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right? He don't know. So Tom's calling me, right? He, he, he can't ruin it for me, okay? So that's, I, that's the power of, co I call that Coke example. I keep track of that, how many people I leave my number with. I write Coke on my daily planner. Coke, I left them my number, Coke, 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 Coke. Right? Shane Rubin said he would do that so much. Him and his team would do that so much. They would get anywhere from like 10 to 20 calls to their office a week. Hmm. Hey, I heard you guys are hiring. That'd be pretty cool, right? Yeah. That's, so that, that's the power of turning a no into referral and then leaving your, your number. So it's, it's like a Coca-Cola machine. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, here's another key. You ever get this? You're trying to set a point with a husband and a wife? Yeah. Hey, let me, uh, let me check my schedule. Let me talk to my... Sounds good my husband first and I'll get back to Let me talk to my wife first, right? Uh, they'll never call you back. Some will, but most won't. Not because they don't like you, they're bad people, they just get busy, right? Uh, they get an ingrown toenail, their hemorrhoids flare up, whatever the case may be. Things happen, people forget to call you back. So a way to control that is anytime I'm setting an appointment, a uh, kitchen table appointment, I got someone on the phone, I need to make something happen. So if I'm talking to Tom and he agrees to meet with me, Right? And he says, well, you know, Monday should work, but let me check with Kim and I'll call you back. They won't call you back. So what I'll say is, we'll tell you what, Tom, you know, my schedule fills up extremely quickly, and I'd hate to miss or overlook you. Tom, would it be okay if we tentatively picked a day and time that you think generally works for you and Kim? I'll leave you my info, and if that conflicts with Kim's schedule, you can give me a call back and let me know, and I can be flexible with you. Is that fair? Great. So do weekdays or weekends, generally speaking, work better for you and Kim? Oh, probably weekends. Great. You prefer Saturday or Sunday? Saturday would be good. Great. I got morning time or afternoon, which is easier. Probably afternoon, 1 o'clock or 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Great, Tom. If you could write that down, let Kim know, and uh, I'll let you know if there's any change on mine. If there's any change on yours, just give me a call. If not, I will come by and I'll see you guys Saturday at 3. Right? Uh, that way the ball's in Tom's court. That way, you know, if something comes up, Tom's like, oh, crap, I told Ryan. That, that 3 o'clock worked, uh, forgot about the kids' practice. Hey, Ryan, so sorry, Tom here. Uh, Kim actually doesn't work. But now he's actually talking to Kim because before he's not going to talk to Kim, right? He's going to forget about it, and I'm going to have no appointment set up. So I want to at least have something tentatively on the books to go see somebody. So uh, those are some basic keys. I don't know, is, there, is there a page two? Oh, there's a page two. Okay, sweet. More good stuff. You like, like this stuff? Yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, if someone books a time but doesn't show up, what to say when you call back? I don't know if you guys have a basic outline, but you should call your no-shows. Again, I was getting so busy, I, I forgot to call them, but you should call your, your no-shows. Give them the benefit of the doubt. You know, hey, hey, uh, Anna, it's, it's Ryan Moody. We spoke earlier in the week and, and set up a time to meet last night at 7.30 to discuss a career opportunity. I didn't see or hear from you, so I wanted to give you a courtesy call to make sure everything was okay. Now I'm going to wait for her reaction. That's going to tell you everything. She's going to generally either be generally apologetic or she's going to be a jerk. You ever call those people? Oh, yeah, forgot. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll ask down, did you think of calling me? Oh, yeah. They don't say, when they don't say sorry, that's when I kind of get a little upset. But <laughs> if they're like, oh, shoot, you know, I totally spaced out, I truly apologize, reschedule with them, right? If they're generally apologetic, give them the benefit of the, well, I don't know why it says why barbecue, but <laughs> give, them, give, them, give them the benefit of the doubt is what it's supposed to mean. So okay. <laughs> Well, I'd be open to give you another opportunity. It doesn't make sense to reschedule. Doesn't make yeah, we can reschedule. Great, I got this day, this day open, right? So give people the benefit of the doubt, right? Things do happen, right? It's not all people are jerks and low integrity. Things do happen. Um, you never know what what happens. So give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, 
close, you got to close on appointments. I, I don't really cover too much over the phone, but I always just set the appointment close. So you always want to take it away. People want what they can't have. One of the biggest keys I could give you if you're prospecting is don't beg. Uh, too many people I see begging like, hey, can you come down, please? Come on, come on, come, come take a look, please. <laughs> don't beg. The second someone feels like you need them, you are toast. You don't need them. You don't. You actually don't need them. They're not showing you an opportunity like Primerica. You're showing them, right? So uh, you all, we teach our people, you know, like a, when the doctor, you know, hits your knee for the reflexes, boom, right? Someone tells you, yes, boom, you got a magnet. say, great, well, I can't promise you anything. Yes, I'm interested. Great, I can't promise you anything. Uh, over the phone, but what I want to do is invite you down to our office so I can introduce you to our managers and put some more info in your hands about what we do in the money involved. That way we can see if there's a mutual interest. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. Uh, so always take it away from people. You have the cookie in this business. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, so I kind of finish up that. I'll kind of wrap up with this and I'll take some questions. Um, you know, I heard Brett Burks give this talk, but you know, I, I think uh, in Primerica, the reason we recruit, like I said, is to build an organization that that works instead of you. Now, whether you came down here to make a lot of money or you know, you're know you a Mother Teresa altruistic type and you just want to help people, you can win here, right? But in the end, who is going to help more people and make more money? Me by myself or you guys as a team? Team. 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 As a team, right? Plain and simple, right? So you've got to sell out to recruiting. you got to make a decision, okay, I'm, I'm going to be a recruiter. Just make, make, make that, I'm a great recruiter, I'm a great recruiter. Everyone says yes to me. Everybody says yes to me. Right? People are attracted to me. I attract leaders, right? Make the decision because it's going to pay off. But you got to build a business here. you got to build a business. See, I think what's challenging sometimes when people come to Primerica is most of us come from a middle class mindset, right? Mm -hmm. And we're programmed or brainwashed for the good or the better, whatever you want to say, to think like middle class people. You know, if you go on the street and you survey, you know, 100 middle class people and ask them, hey, what's your top five financial goals? They'll tell you it's buying a home. Will they not? Buy a home, American dream on home ownership, buy a home. Right? We all understand buying a home is better than renting a home, right? Mm -hmm. Right? You, when you rent an apartment or home, you pay, you stay. You pay, you stay, you pay, you stay. You pay, you stay, you pay, you stay. What happens when you stop paying? You stop staying, staying, right? <laughs> Whereas a home, you pay, you stay, you pay, you stay, you pay, you stay. Eventually, you pay that sucker off. And now you have some equity. You have an actual asset that you can sell. You can give it to your kids. You can rent out to people where you have now passive income. So isn't it funny? Middle class people have this concept down that owning a home is better than renting a home. Right? Mm -hmm. But that's not your biggest asset. Your biggest asset is not a home. Your biggest asset is your ability to make money. Think about it. The average employee, let's say they make 40 grand a year, they work for 40 years of their life, that's $1.6 million. That's a far greater asset than a home is. Wouldn't you agree? So what's funny is middle class people, they want to own a home, but they rent their time at a job. See, the job, you work for a check. You work for a check. You work for a check, and you work for a check. But when you stop working, the checks keep coming in? Absolutely not. See, poor people, if you look at the, the class society in America, poor people, do they own a home or do they rent? They rent. Do they own a business or do they work a job? Work a job. Do the wealthy, do they own a home or rent? They own. Do they work a job or own a business? The middle class, the middle class, just because they're that, they're in the middle. They own a home, but they rent their time. See, when I saw Primerica, I saw a chance to build a company within a company where if I recruited, trained, developed enough good quality leaders, knew it wasn't going to be easy, but if I did that, I can build up an ass that pay me 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 grand a month, however much you want, so that at that point you could buy as many daggum homes as you want. Right? So you see all my friends on Facebook taking pictures outside their home with their key. First time home buyer. Oh my God, congratulations, home buyer. But they, they, they're a daggum employee written their time away. I said, I'm going to put my head down in Primerica. I'm going to go find some good quality people. I know it's not going to be easy. But if I do that, I can build a system, a business that pays me 20, 30 grand a month, and I could be free. Because the only way to be free in America is you have to have a lot of time and a lot of money. Would you agree? Yeah. Look around. Who has time and money? Athletes and entertainers. I can't sing or dance, and the NBA is not calling me anytime soon. Sure. <laughs> you look around a third group of people, business owners have the time and the money. Right. right? Business owners have time and money too. And you could be a tall business owner, short business owner, fat business owner, skinny business owner, white business owner, black business owner, Latino, Asian. It doesn't matter. It's how bad you want it. And that's the beautiful thing about Primerica is how bad you want it. You know, we got a great campaign going on. Bring Dwayne back to apologize to us. 
And we got to put Colorado on the map. That's going to start with the leaders in this office, right? You know, we were in, in, in Puerto Rico, and, you know, people say, where are you from? I said, Denver. And they kind of look at you like, people live in Denver? Because <laughs> there's nobody in Denver outside of the Harms and the March signs, right? And they're going to be gone, right? So that kind of made me mad where we got to put Colorado on the map. And the only way we're going to do it, it's not by big investment production. It's going to be by recruiting big, big numbers where pretty soon, instead of people playing Ray Costello at their training, they're going to be playing Tom and Kim Welton. They're going to be playing Josh John at their training. They're going to be playing all you guys at their training because you guys made a decision to do what's different, what's not easy in primary, and that's go and recruit, train, and build an army. Most people don't want to do it because it's not easy. They settle for the easy ways to make money, and that's fine. You can do whatever you want to do. But I said, if I build a business here, I get all the recognition, I'll get all the money, and I'll have a system that runs instead of me. And that's why people admire the harms. That's why people admire the market science because they went out and built a business. But it all starts with recruiting. So make a decision today. I challenge you to make a decision today that you will be a double-edged recruiter, right? Uh, you will go and prospect like a mad person because the only way you get good at talking to people is talking to people, yeah. right? Bobby Weeson will tell you that. And if you go do that, I guarantee you, you will be thankful you did. All right? So thank you so much for having me. It's truly an honor uh, to speak in front of you guys. I hope that was valuable. I hope you can take something away today and say, I'm going to implement this. I'm going to do this in my business uh, to help me out and move my business forward. Because that's, that's my main intention. I'm going to help you guys out. Again, I was a person sitting in the back room like, help me out. I need help. Right? So hope you can take away. Even if it's just a small thing to change and implement your business to become a better prospect, to become a better recruiter, a better leader as well. So uh, thanks so much for having me. I'll kind of take any questions uh, you guys might have. And, uh, well, 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 You said, uh, first of all, thanks, man. I got a lot out of that. Um, Great. You said once you get people to sit down with you, it takes you about, your interview is about 12 minutes? Yeah, 12, 15 minutes. So what do you, what does that entail then? Uh, very, the most important thing, you know, I don't care what, that does not, does not come down to presentation. You can do any presentation you want to do. It comes down to are they motivated. Okay. So when I sit down with somebody, I just have a scripted questionnaire where I found out what do they do now. So I have a scripted questionnaire, what do you do now? I work at Starbucks. I ask them, what do you like about what you do? Okay, and then I ask them, what do they dislike three times? What do you dislike? In addition to that, what else would you change? In addition to that, what else would you improve on? So my goal is psychologically, I want them to start complaining to me about their job. I'm going to find out one thing they like, three things they dislike, and I want to use that to recruit them. So everything they like at their current job, I want to show them they can have a Primerica. Everything they don't like, they don't have to have a Primerica. So that's what I go through. That's kind of build rapport and get to know the person, because in the end, you know if someone has credibility, that's the biggest thing. Do they have credibility, right? You know, Mark always says, you know, if, if you hire this person, would you feel comfortable leaving them at home with your kid? Mm -hmm. The question, if it's no, then don't hire them. Yeah. Right? But you know, you, you can read people, right? So that's the biggest thing, just kind of getting to know someone. Then I kind of find out what their goals are. So I just ask people, you know, where you work now, you're making all the money you want to make. Of course not. Hey, if you made an extra 10 or 20 grand this year, what would you do with it? i pay off my debt. Really, you said that first. Why is that so important to you? Oh, I, I can't be in a debt. Can't stand me in debt. Really? What kind of debt do you have? Student loans, car loans, man, it's just, if you're debt free, how'd that make you feel, Josh? Oh, I feel great. I just dig. How does that make you feel? Tell me more about that. Elaborate on that. I want them to get to talking about their goals. Okay. Right? After you're debt free, what would you do, Josh? Oh, man, I'd probably take a vacation. Yeah? Where would you go? Hawaii. Why? Why Hawaii? Now, I've never been, been, never been to Hawaii. Yeah? How'd that feel? I'm going to go to Hawaii. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Anything else that motivates Josh? What are the goals and dreams you have? Well, that's pretty much it. Uh, it's all in the questionnaire. Okay, Josh, here's a, here's a question, man. You, you've you been there for three years. Do you see yourself staying at Starbucks for the next 30 years? No. Well, what is your exit strategy? If you don't like the boss, you don't like the pay, you don't like the time, but you don't see yourself there for 30 years, what is your exit strategy? Well, I don't have one. So I'm assuming that's what I mean today? Yeah. So Josh, if I could show you an exit strategy or a way to make extra income to pay off your debt, go to Hawaii, is that something you'd be open to take a closer look at? Absolutely. Great. Let me show you what I do. Whatever presentation you do, I go through that. Uh, I really want to overcome the fear of rejection, fear of failure. Throughout the presentation, people, the only reason they don't join Primerica, they're scared of rejection, scared of failure. Hey, Josh, if you showed someone how to go from whole life to term, you double their coverage from half the cost, that's a pretty easy decision, don't you agree? Oh, yeah. Josh, if you show someone how to go from being in debt 25 years to 5 years, how'd that family feel about you? Oh, they feel great. So I get them to say, overcome their own fears, and uh, pretty much that's going to go through what it takes to get started, and I go back to their goals. So if they can commit to showing up, I think Thomas on this, you ask for commitments to show up, to get licensed, get trained, do your own F&A. I just asked him, I said, well, where are you working now? 
You know, are they, when are they going to pay an extra 10 or 20 grand? Never. I kind of use that phraseology. So what you're telling me is if you stay there, you're never going to accomplish your goals and dreams? Yeah. Why are you willing to change? Yeah. Well, if we could hire you part-time without quitting your job, is there any reason you wouldn't start with us? So again, it comes down to not the presentation, but what are their goals? And I use that to tie that big, back into how Primary can help them get to their goals. But fast, efficient, to the point, uh, someone's either in or they're out. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Awesome. Hey, Brian, you use the word producer a lot. Uh -huh. Can you <coughs> kind of talk about what your definition is of somebody that falls in that category of a producer? Yeah, that's when you asked that. We were, we were on the phone with Kathy, and they were like, Kathy, what, what's your definition of 20%? What's your definition of producer, right? And I think a producer is, is someone who they, they show up, they don't miss meetings. Um, like Ray was saying, you can't win here if you don't show up. If you pick and choose a meeting you want to go, you're never winning here, right? Uh, because your team will do what they see you do, not what you say. So if you don't show up, will your team show up? No, right? So you, for one, I think you got to show up. Uh, and then simplify and answer your question, Tom. Somebody who makes something happen on a consistent basis, right? I think if you're part-time, you should do it one by one at least every single month. That's one recruit. That's 1,000 for them. You should absolutely do that if you're part-time. That's more than a dead man will do, right? <laughs> so I think a producer, they mean what they say. They show up to everything, and they can make something happen, right? And that's kind of my definition. Great. Yeah. Good. Good. I got a question. So um, when you are, for instance, calling the list uh -huh. for a new recruit uh -huh. and it's the training script, uh -huh. what if they say no then? So where do you take it from there? Sure. So, you know, hey, you know, I got new trainees starting with the company. I'd like to sit down and, you know, do some training hours. And they say, gotcha. well, you know what, no. So you're trying to set up like a kitchen table training plan. Right. Okay. Training appointment for so you're, like, you're training me and you want to set up a time with Tom and Kim and they're like, no. Right. Well, first, here, here, here's what I say. I, I say, uh, uh, I get a reference. So I, I call, I have them text Tom and Kim. Hey, I started a second career. I listen to you guys as a reference. Could you say something good about me? Ryan Moody, my trainer, will call you. So they expect, they're expecting my call. And usually I kind of pre-qualify. So your, your text is a reference, not can you, yes. I need some training. We yes. just say, I need a reference. The text message is, I start a second career, and I list you guys as references. <clears throat> Could you say something good about me? My trainer will call you. So they know I'm going to be calling them. And I, I qualify them, because I, I, if they tell you no, they just don't have any credibility. So I make sure they have credit. How do you know Tom and Kim? Oh, they're good friends of mine. Right? What do they do for work? So I really pre-qualify. Oh, they're, they're very successful. Here's what they do. Great. You have good credibility with them. If you ask for help, they help you out. Yeah, great. Send that text message. I get the reference, how do you know them, how do you describe Joe, he's this, that. Well, hey, we work in the financial field, and he's got to get licensed, so we do handle money, Tom and Kim, do you feel like he's trustworthy, he's a person of integrity, like you trust him? Yeah, I trust him. Well, great, the reason I asked is Tom has to get licensed with our company, and before he goes on his own, he needs to witness some training appointments for his practice, and he'd rather get trained with someone he knew than a stranger. So Tom, I want to see if he had enough credibility with you and Kim that you guys would help him out with that and witness a training appointment for his practice. Sure. Great. We'll make it very convenient. We'll come to you, show you what he's going to be doing. He's scheduled to work with me Monday or Tuesday not this week. Which would you prefer? But if they do tell me no, because I haven't had it happen, they'll say, ah, oh, no, I really wouldn't feel comfortable with that. Really? Okay. Well, tell me, is there something I should be concerned about with his credibility? Because he said he had great credibility with you. Is there something I should be concerned about, Joe? No. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, I just, you, you, you come trying to come over and sell me something? No. Tom, you may or may not be interested in what we do, but as I was saying, he's getting licensed and needs to witness a few training appointments. So you can put away your checkbook and your credit card. You may or may not be interested in what we do. We simply want to show you what he's going to be doing so you can get some practice and repetition. Could you help him out with that? Well, I guess we could. Okay, great. Yeah. No, we can't. Oh, wow, okay. Well, I guess I'll, I'll try someone else to you. Try someone else that you thought might have more credibility with him. Thanks, have a great day. Mm -hmm. But usually you only, you only get that if they don't have the credibility. Right. And we only want to go sit down with people who have great credibility, right? right? Yeah, so that's how I handle that. Dude, you're a beast. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? You mentioned cold calling resumes early in your talk. Mm -hmm. And I thought your talk was awesome, by the way. <coughs> expand on that a little bit. How does that play out? Or how do you, do you still do that? And how do you uh, do resumes, that? no, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I was going on Craigslist, and you, know, <laughs> oh, okay. you find a low, lower quality person on Craigslist. But I was just trying to make something happen, and it helped me perfect my technique, because you get all the objections when you <laughs> call some strangers. So <laughs> I would just use a bait, all from Shane Rubin. So if I got Anna Wynn's number, 
and answer the phone. Hey, Anna, my name is Ryan Moody. We haven't had a chance to meet yet, but your number was referred to me as someone that might be interested in a potential career change if the money were right. So I just want to see if any of your options are open. She's going to say, yes. Great. Can't promise thing, but let me schedule time to get together with you. Put some info in your hands if there's a mutual interest. Is that fair? Yeah, got Monday or Tuesday open, which do you prefer? That's easy. She says, no. I kind of go through, really, what do you do? Right? But a resume, most of the time they're really open. Mm -hmm. so that, that's how I said it right then and there. Great. Let's hear the time to get together with you and put some details in your hands. They might ask you, well, how'd you get my name? That's a great question, John. We use similar <coughs> methods that corporate recruiters and headhunters use to obtain quality prospects. Are you kind of familiar with those methods? No? Okay, we use those same methods. So are your options open? <laughs> yes? Great, we use those same methods. Are your options open? All right? Um, you know, great. I mean, that, that's, that's what I did, resumes. But it was low, low success. But I just want to get good on the phone and get some activity going. And that led to stuff. You know, people come in, they put references down, and they can interest other people. But here's the challenge with resumes. They're looking for a job. This is not a job. You know, you're going to get more people come in, oh, I thought this was an interview. Oh, I thought this was a job, right? So that, that's, I don't really call resumes much anymore. Uh, but I'll call people, this cards. Uh, you give me a name and number. If there's a name and number right there, I'll pick it up. Says John, I'll call John. Hey, John, Ryan Moody here. I'm not sure if you remember now. We spoke, gosh, six to nine months ago. <laughs> uh, I had an opportunity with us. Timing wasn't right, but he said it was okay to follow up with you when I was looking again. I just want to uphold my commitment, let you know I'm filming some more positions. Timing better for you. Your options open. I don't remember speaking to you. Yeah, I mean, it's six to nine. It's wild, but I didn't expect it to. <laughs> Are your options open? <laughs> Well, what do you do? It's asset management. Do you have any experience? No, I don't have experience. That's fine. I'm not looking for experience. What do you do? Well, I work for Comcast. Really? How long have you been there for? A couple years, yeah. Is that something you see yourself doing for 30 years? Well, I don't know. Well, tell me, John, if the money and the position and the fit were better for you elsewhere, are you the kind of person that would be open to at least exploring an opportunity like that? Well, I don't see why not. Well, great, man. I love the opportunity to meet you this time around and get some info in your hands and there's some mutual interest. How's that sound? That's great. Let's get creative. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's a petition. <laughs> but here's the thing: when you get into the, the from the cold market, you got to work the warm market because the cold it's draining. I mean, you need a lot of rejection. You got to go with a lot of numbers. So when you get into somebody's market, you want to show them success, get them on appointments, use that warm market, build them a team. Right? That's a lot easier. It's so much easier to make a call. Hey, Tom, we haven't met yet, but Anna Nguyen asked me to give you a call. You know Anna, right? Yeah. That's a much easier call to make. But if you got to, whatever you got to do to get in that market, by all means, you know, do it. <coughs> Go. Okay, so um, you set the time to meet with them. So what do you show them then? Are you doing your own thing, or what presentation are you using? I just use the, the company's success system presentation okay, before and after. Before. Yeah. Okay. I just keep it real simple. I show them who we are. I show them financial challenges and the before and the after and the money involved. Yeah. More and more, I was, I was one of those guys like, well, if I did this presentation, I had to call this size, I could recruit more people. It has nothing to do with the presentation. Hmm. You know, you could do a napkin presentation. Someone's just interested. I think it's simple to the point. You're asking good recruiting questions and you're using a lot of emotional questions. Uh, that, that's, that's the biggest key, whatever presentation. Go for it. Um, some of my new recruits uh, are going to be opening up a market in Denver. Uh -huh. How do we get them to you? We, we, I mean, we have our office. You know, we just run our op nights on Wednesday nights, and then we do Friday night trainings. Yeah. So Wednesday nights at seven thirty, then we so do. We can have people you. come from Yeah. 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 More the merrier. <clears throat> yep. And then we're probably going to be moving here in a month or two. Kind of a little closer to the actual Denver. We're in Centennial now, so we're kind of close to like Southeast Denver, probably. And I mean, we, we do that a lot where, hey, this person coming up, you look out for them. The more the merrier. Awesome. Any other questions? Anybody else? All right, let's give Ryan another hand.